them to Susan and to Mark and um, uh, Paul that I find it very, very hard to concentrate at times. So sometimes all I do is just write, just write down yeah. the ideas that I have. Um, or I would listen to music and or read a bit of poetry or um, there are certain times that I will, you know, themes will come up and titles will come up and the title yeah. might incubate, incubate in my system for quite a period of time, you know. So so the idea of creating something, um, I like to work towards um, a series of pieces of work, you know, so I, I don't think you, know, you can capture completely um, yeah. a feeling or an emotion in just one work. It can be a series of pieces so you could quite easily um uh, do several pieces based on the rock formation that you that you shared you know yeah. the idea of the the christmas lights the reflection series yeah. you know and even actually start to group you know actually actually even on a, on a page you know um what i tend to do is you know i it's a you know very simply you know if you think of what your theme is you, you, your theme or your title and yeah. um, you know, it's pretty much like that, you know. Yeah. Yeah, this you know, might... And you'll find your ideas. And sometimes to actually organize your thinking, sometimes we, we, we had this conversation yesterday, Susan, as well with, with Christy, that, you know, it's not always about the painting, you, you know, or the, the, the real creativity starts in your head. Yes. And, and when you write or organize or structure your thoughts, Sometimes, yeah. I don't know whether you would find this, but sometimes you can overwork a piece of work. You know, you can uh, yeah. paint and paint yeah. and then lose it. You can actually lose it. So it's actually coming back to it again. And um, and sometimes in that case, you have to go away and do something else. Yeah, you and know? that's what this, uh, this uh, Burj Khalifa with me. <laughs> I have always uh -huh. painted it because I just, I don't, I have not felt that uh, feeling. It is about the feeling. Yes. That, uh, I yeah. About this. Yeah. Do, do you know? Do you know what might be useful to do, Eva, or to consider is to take a photograph of the different stages of painting, so you don't okay. lose some of the images, because okay. you might come back to them again. You might actually come back yeah. to, to aspects of it again, and um, there may be parts of the painting that you like more than others. So you yeah. literally could cut it up. You literally could cut up and save what you like and do you know what I mean? So don't throw yeah. out anything, never throw out anything, um, you know, within reason. Um, but uh, the source of what you're doing could be in this in another painting. Yeah, yeah, I totally you know. agree. And I have pictures yeah. of painting as uh, how it was before. I have them on my phone actually. Uh -huh. And you see the, the space that you're in, have you just got one room? Oh, uh, I have, uh, no, this is my living room, but this is also my living room. This is also my, my uh, where I do my, where I paint. This is my painting room as well. And okay, then, okay, no, I have okay. yoga room I, and I also have my bedroom as well. Okay, because if, you, if you're living, I have a sister who's in Dublin and she's uh, staying in a very small space, you know, and she's finding it difficult to, you know, the working zone and the relaxing zone. And I know here, like I'm, I live in a, a, a small bungalow, you know. And while I have a, a studio space, um, it's 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 quite it's quite small. And then I have a, a bigger storage space. But I find I'm doing a lot of uh, work at the kitchen table. Okay. Because I just I feel like I can concentrate more. But I know that there are times when I go into the other spaces, and it's like going into a different season. You know, yeah, yeah. so so my, my my living room is like a, a, the place to watch TV or to read or relax. The the kitchen table is a place to work. You know, it's yeah. where I would set up the computer. You know, and then uh, the um the other uh, the 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 workspace that I have in the uh, the garage area or the studio space, I'm doing a lot of clearing and decluttering. So I just feel that sometimes I have to close the door and close my mind off to that and just concentrate on certain things otherwise i find i find my I, I i personally find now my concentration is very limited so i can i can only do certain things at certain times and then i, I was saying earlier that i i always start off the day with you know lighting a candle you know as a, it's almost like a ritual and yeah. um and and one of the one of the things that i was saying to the others is a really good thing to do um and sometimes it could be your source for your work is just to write even if it's only two pages like morning pages just to write how you're feeling, 
to get the emotions out of your system and then three things that you're grateful for you know and it gives you a sort of a a clear head and a structure then to to sort of work towards you know and um i suppose the beauty about the internet now as well is that you can access art movements and you know and information about artists about um um art history you know geology you know there's lots of things that you can source information about you know and um one of the organizations that i work, work with um is the royal ulster academy and it's a representation of art the royal ulster academy and i'll send you i'll send you the the details um yeah and they have they uh, there are a number of really well known and we you know really renowned artists from northern ireland and then every year there's an annual exhibition where they encourage emerging artists to, to exhibit alongside them so we would have 1800 entries and we can only select up to maybe 400 which is which can be hugely disappointing but um but it's a great opportunity to see you know um up and coming artists exhibit behind besides like you know people who are really renowned for years and years um but certainly in terms of the work that susan is doing in, in object through it that it's great to be part of a community of artists and a network you know susan is very genuinely um committed to, to supporting artists and supporting the, the, the their professional development as well as the obviously the context of the gallery and um, my background would be well I taught for years at, at, in school and college and university and in, in a prison and um, I have worked with artists and supported artists you know in, in terms of exhibitions and yeah. festival and you know things that are really really you know important to me but I also value the whole area of arts and mental health and, and well-being and I think it's really really it's a great it's a great gift to have if you can use this time as well for your own self-expression and your own feelings and being playful you know that every piece of work you're starting from in here that it's not it, it doesn't have to be a masterpiece it is just an opportunity to play and be light around that and playful yeah. and i think christy said that yesterday susan mm -hmm. she, she, she talked about you know that you can get bogged down in trying to be such a serious artist and you know and i know for me i'm thinking oh maybe i should be going back to this sort of work and you know maybe i should be you know this piece of work here that i'm working on is is an interpretation of a of a piece that I, I i still have a lot of work to do on it but i have left it for quite a while because i think i don't want to i don't want to lose what i have i don't want to spoil it but i'm afraid of making a mistake and i just have to get over myself i just have to yeah. just get in get back and get into it again you know and the other thing i was going to say as well is that if you find you're running out of materials um collage is a great thing to do have you have yeah. you have you access to any uh, newspapers or magazines or anything like that uh i i i don't think i have access to any of these and uh yeah no and um I, and I don't think I, uh, it, it, my daughter as well, she suggested that to me once, but I don't know if it is something I like to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I probably need to try it once and see if I like it. Because I well, have, I'm just I thinking, have, I'm, yeah, because I yeah, have I'm so just thinking, I'm thinking, uh, uh, go ahead. Sorry. Because I have so many ideas, so, so, so many ideas that I really, really want to get them out on the canvas. Mm -hmm. And that is why, uh, that is what, uh, how I feel. That's why probably I, I don't think I want to do collage. Because yeah. I have yeah. a face of uh, paints or of, uh, of uh, acrylic or even oil. I have so many ideas that I want to put it, to put out first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you started out with um, the geologic formations, you know, are you yes. still wanting to, you know, interpret what you're seeing under the microscope? Yes, absolutely. But and there's so much that I have looked at because that is my... my that's a brilliant, that's an excellent source. Eva, that is it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. because that's what I do daily. Uh, I that's an excellent rock. source. Uh, I mean, there's some beautiful, beautiful. 
Uh -huh. It's a fabulous source of inspiration, you know, um, because the colors, the textures, the, the photography, the microscopic images are so, so powerful. They would inspire you, you know, um, completely. And, and actually some of them look like um, figurative. Some of them look like landscapes. I mean, it's, they're really quite powerful. Yeah, and also I, I write poetry for my paintings because I feel that they have, I still, after I finish a painting, I still have words to say about them that I've not put in the painting. So a few of my paintings, they have poetry as well. Do you want yes. to well, that's a lovely, that's, that's, that's a lovely thing to do. That's, that's, well, do you know what's really important to, to, to write those down and to keep a record of those? And you see, you mentioned as well, Eva, you've got so many ideas. It's impossible yeah. to do everything, but what you can do is write them down and, and yeah. you may come back to them and revisit them at, at different stages, you know, yeah. because I, this I, work so can be really, really exhausting. It can be really fulfilling and it can be quite intense. It can also be yeah. very, very liberating as well, you know. Yes, yes, that is how I feel. When it will be that day that I have all these ideas out and then I can start with new ideas because every time I go, or, for example, I go to work to look at the rocks, new ideas come up, come up. Or when I was traveling, I have so many pictures of all kinds of different things that I see that probably they are not that important for other people, but for me are so important because they, they invoke some feelings inside me. And um, so anyway, yeah. Um, Ava, I think it might. Is Noel gone? Noel, I think she's probably reconnecting. Let me see. Yeah, I can. I can hear you. I can hear you, but I can't see you. Okay. Susan and I have. I can. I can hear you, but I think I'm going back. Okay. Yeah. We're back. Uh huh. Noel. Noelle, I thought it might be interesting for Ava to tell you a little bit. She's in a unique position because there is a spiritual piece that comes across in her paintings. And Ava, I thought you might tell, share with Noelle a little bit about the spiritual place in Albania that you're over or that you're connected to. Because yeah. I think that informs kind of your work too. Yeah, that is true, and it comes across because it is uh, very important <laughs> actually to me. Right. So, um, we have a spiritual place in Albania that I'm supposed to be in charge in actually a few years and probably very soon. Um, that uh, spiritual place was built, um, um, so in that spiritual place there are like five tombs. And one of them, she was a person who lived around 300 years ago during the bubonic plague. And uh, that yes. helps. It is like, it's very parallel with what we are going through right now, actually. At the time, she helped so much. Uh, it, it was the, yes. the bubonic plague in Balkans. And she helped so much during that time that uh, after her death, she got the title from uh, the government of a saint. And, uh, and uh, she was buried in her properties. That's why she's buried there in our lands because she was uh, one of the ancestors of my husband. And uh, since then, people come and pilgrim every day in our place. Uh, so that spiritual place is a Sufi place. And people from all religions, they come. It doesn't matter what religion they are, what color they have, what yeah. lot of they are. Always they come, all different people. And, there are also people who have come to who come to us who have been coming through generations through the families, their families, like old, like three hundred years old uh, family uh, friendships, and uh, uh -huh. so, uh, and this is, uh, I guess, this is a part of my life has been like learning a lot, traveling, uh, uh, learning a lot of, about. Uh, all uh, people in different places in different countries i have always wherever i've lived i have immersed in the culture of the, uh, the place and i have because that is how i wanted to connect with people and learn more about them and myself as well and that it is this piece also i'm a trained yoga teacher as well and i 
yoga practitioner. So yoga is part of my life with the daily practice. Great. And so you can, so, you can you're practicing it. You're, 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 then you're, you're very safe and well and practicing it where you are. Oh, yeah, yeah. Every day. Uh -huh. Every day. Actually, I'm right now building a business of uh, Very yoga. Good. Yes. Yeah, because I want to, in these times, I want to be able to also help people. And I, I'm going to offer uh, classes and packages for free. Just, uh, it's going to be meditation and uh, yoga flows and alignment. Mm -hmm. But, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, just to be... Very helpful. good. So, Very yeah. good. I have, I, have, I have a few friends who are doing something similar you know who, who are experimenting online you know during this time as yeah. well and um, yeah. Yeah. yeah and it's interesting because you know for some of us as well who who are embracing technology and and, and i would be quite um i would be quite uh, private in my own work and creating my own work and my 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 um my jobs in the past have been very much very important very um much involved in Supporting artists, you know, supporting exhibitions, supporting um, events and cultural events, and leading on a number of various aspects of um, bringing people forward. But on a personal level, I like to be quite private in what I create in my own space. So, I think, yeah. So I think Susan was saying to you that I find it easier to support others than I do to actually, it, you know, talk about my own work because it's it's kind of an evolving process but I, I I try to have I try to work towards a solo exhibition every couple of years and it would be involved in group exhibitions as well and it's interesting that um, the number of artists that are putting their work up online and are keen to get to reach out even during this time and it depends again very much on the quality of the images and the quality of the expertise the, the painting and the and the creation of the pieces is one thing but getting your work out there and that's why the, the you know um, with Susan's support and Mark's and, and you know those sort of skills are really really important you know for artists um, and I know the galleries that I would have worked with and would have supported as well that we were able to, 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 to promote artists and when you look at the whole health and well-being agenda there's a lot of interest in that as well you know so um, I wish you the best of luck with that that's a really important thing to do and I think you know, really, we're, we're only a, a button away from each other in terms of technology. You know, it doesn't matter what country, you know, like you're, you're at the minute, you are um, in, in Saudi Arabia. Yeah. 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 And I mean, yeah. it's soon in Oklahoma and I'm in, I'm in Ireland and it's, it's quite amazing, you know, when you think of it, yeah. you know. <laughs> uh -huh. So do you see anybody at all during the day, Eva? Yeah, I go to work. I have um, I have a permission from the government to work during the day. Okay, okay. Yeah, so, because I work. So for, okay. I work for Saudi Aramco, and mm -hmm. we have to produce oil and gas every day. So. Yeah. Yeah. And but, and uh, do you have the, presumably you have the social distancing? You know where you have to you have to yeah. be so far apart from colleagues and. All of that. Yeah. I, it's, uh, well, in in the office, all who is left in the office, we don't. Uh, it's everybody's healthy, and we are all kind of quarantined because uh, the way how we work here it is, it's a camp. Yeah. It's a compound, so we don't yes. live with the Saudis. We live in a compound, which is like a, a small town, like Oklahoma City, for example. Okay. Is that and big? Is it that big? It is big. But we are around probably 2,000 people in camp. Like when I say Oklahoma City, like the center of Oklahoma, like Oklahoma City. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. and, um, and yeah, it is. Um, it, so we are kind of healthy here and we don't socialize. We just stay everybody in their own, own homes. But then we meet at work. So far in our building, uh, in our group, nobody has been sick because we are all very careful. We don't go out. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. so, That's there, I, felt, I felt a little uh, bit sick last, last week and also a few days ago and I thought but I think it is the allergies now because there, is, there was a lot of dust uh, in the air because that is the problem here in South is the dust that comes from the desert. That's, yes. Yeah. 
Yes. And is it very hot there right now? It's hot. Today was very hot. Mm -hmm. It was very, very hot, yeah. Mm -hmm. and today What's it like I, for you, Art? I was so happy because I have not been, go, been able to buy food for two weeks because there was so many people. <laughs> And, and uh, now yeah. it is with a, so I, uh, I had, I arranged an appointment yesterday to go and buy food. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm similar. I live in a, in a small town, but I have only, uh, only leave the house once a week to go and buy um, groceries and food because yeah. I don't want to have to um, go into a big supermarket and, and, I, and I, avoid, I avoid the busiest time as well. I did call with um, two friends that are in their 80s. They're two artists and they're two lovely, lovely people who are, you know, isolated. And, um, you know, then another friend, her father, Savvy, died. And again, they couldn't celebrate his, his, his you know, his funeral, his life. So, so there's all sorts of mixed emotions. But it's amazing how, even though people are apart, the, the sense of camaraderie and the sense of community spirit is very strong. It is very strong and it is very nice, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very and do you listen to music as well, Eva? Do you listen to music at all? Yeah, I do. I love, lately I have, uh, I have found an artist. She, um, her name uh, is LP. And the song that she sing, sings, uh, uh, she's Italian, she's American-Italian, Muddy Waters. If what, you what's her name? LP, she goes by LP. She has another name like Laura something probably, but LP. And uh -huh. Muddy Waters, Muddy Waters is one of the songs. And she also sings Halo, way better oh, yeah. than the other. Yes. Yes, I think I know who you're talking about. Yes, yeah. yes, uh huh, uh huh. Funny, there's a friend, there's a friend who has set up um a a a, a, a group on on Facebook called Dancing at Eight, and okay. uh, he gets everybody to nominate uh, uh, songs, and then what they do is uh, then he would he puts them on Spotify, Spotify. You know, so you can play them. But when you think of it, it's just lovely thinking of music. I mean, if we were to create a time capsule of this time, because we don't know how long it's going to be, when you think of the year 2020, and you think of, you know, January, February, March, April, you know, now, um, realistically, we would be very lucky if this doesn't go on to, you know, Christmas, you know, the way things are. Maybe the lockdown won't be as tight, but realistically, you know, that's what I'm thinking in my own head. But I'm thinking, um, I thought the other day, if, if, if every family or every artist created a time capsule, what would that time capsule be? And I was thinking um, too, Susan, of the title of your gallery, you mm -hmm. know, and I mean, it's a perfect, it is the perfect title, you know, um, that if we were to create a, a little time capsule um, and bring them together at the end of this, what would it, what, what would it look like? Yeah. Oh, it's such an interesting idea. And Ava, mm -hmm. we haven't had a chance to talk, but you know, I'm, because I, the physical gallery, no one can come in right now. So I partnered with Artsy. It's an online global platform. So every artist will be able to upload their profile and information on this global platform, but I can also create exhibitions. So we can oh. create this exhibition of work that's being produced during this time, like, um, like Noelle was saying, and I love have, have the online exhibition. I yeah. love this idea. I can bring a painting with this idea. Oh, good, good. Because for some reason this time, I, I, am, I am busy and I'm doing things I love to do during this time. And so it, it, for me, it, it feels like that's the definition of uh, humanity in, uh, today in this, uh, our generation. And, right. Uh, do you know? Do you know? Actually, you're 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 not the first person to say that. Christy said that yesterday as well, Susan. If you remember, that she yeah. was very happy and very content and very grateful. And yeah. I know lots of people who are actually coping very very well with the with this uh, setup, particularly artists, because they're yeah. used to working in isolation. They're used to, um, and and I think if you work beyond the arts, I think the daily grind of the work that that any of us do 
is um, the fact that that has been removed from us, mm. and that we've we've, still, we've been give, we've been given permission to stay at home and to to look after ourselves suddenly opens the floor the, the the floodgates to do some really interesting things and things that we've put off for a long long time yeah. you know things oh, this, you know even even people that we we haven't connected with for a long time letters that were unwritten cards that haven't been sent you know and i, I but i i also know as well that while technology has been brilliant it also in order to balance our own mental health we need to balance the use of it because i know and um, we were talking earlier about you know the use of zoom calls and and um mm -hmm. whatsapp and all of the rest and they're and they're great but you know they can be exhausting you know and mm -hmm. um, it, it's funny because we we're talking as well susan was chatting to a friend who was saying that they found it they didn't want to do whatsapp they didn't want to do zoom because they didn't want to have to look at their own face <laughs> Right. <laughs> they didn't want to have to look at their own face and they didn't want to be surprised by not having makeup on or lipstick on or whatever and then some people get past that stage do you know what I mean so in a way it's funny if it's by appointment you know where people organize you know a virtual coffee that's what we were, we're doing yeah. you know we're chatting remember uh, because um, the lovely thing is that Susan and I only met each other for the first time in May last year and so we were pretty much in contact every week you know, like yes. this, you know, mm -hmm. WhatsApp. But the thing about it as well is that um, we're making it up as we go along, you know, in, in ways, aren't we, Susan? We are. In we terms are. of yeah. thinking, you know, well, and even on, on um, process. Yeah. Yeah. And even on Sunday night, it's Susan, when we were chatting as well, and we were talking about, oh, we could do this and we could do that. And, and, and sometimes you put yourself under huge pressure to um, feel that you should be doing something or being creative. But sometimes when we are in re that relaxed state, um, yes. you know, and, and quite joyful. And I was listening to um Abraham Hicks. I don't know whether you listen to her on, on YouTube. She's very it's very interesting. Um she had a piece of very important advice. Um and it was if you have if you have a desire to do something, you know, do it, you know, for yourself. You know, if you you know feel that you're under duress to ring somebody or to talk to somebody and you feel that it's hard work, well then that's not the time to do it. You know mm -hmm. that you that we, we are better off actually yes being spontaneous and doing things that we like to do but self-care is 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 really really important because when we look after ourselves we are we are much much better at um supporting other people and i thought it was an interesting one yeah. <laughs> i just <laughs> i felt like a piece of chocolate before this go <laughs> with the with the coffee and i thought yeah. i'm taking abraham hicks literally here you know but um but I think I think there's something in that in terms of during this time not to be um, too sore on ourselves. You'd said that Susan as well on Sunday, you know, when we're talking, but just to be gentle with ourselves. Right. Um, yeah. And is, and yeah. there are great highs and great lows during this period, you know, and the sadness will, it comes and goes as well, obviously because there's the fear of the unknown. But but I think rather than deny it or resist it, just to embrace it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like oh, you were saying, Ava, last weekend you said you just slept all weekend. Yes, and I, I think your body just needed to recharge. You yeah, know. I it, it was exhausting because uh, we are going through, through so much changes in the office, and people were scared. You and you feel that energy, that the panic of people, because they have been yeah. uh, every week they have been more and more strict. Uh, and so every time they get more strict, the government people kind of panic, and uh, and I was so exhausted from all that energy around me, very exhausted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think if you are anyway have any any degree of empathy, you pick up other people's fear or other people's sadness or other people's um, terror, you know, as well. Yeah. So so at the same time, if people are in good form or in good spirits that is equally infectious you know yeah. that, that's it's, it, it can be a really really good thing to be you know and and i think it's important to protect yourself from people that will pull you down you know because th there has to be buoyancy somewhere along the yeah. line here i do a lot of of that work with my yoga <laughs> yes so, absolutely yeah and i have I do a lot of meditation where I, where i put all this and i can feel the energy of people uh, when they yeah. have that kind of energy, so I put my protections up. But uh, still, there was so much last week that it was like 
uh, all over and uh, I just needed that weekend to sleep. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. To absolutely sleep. To be able to sleep is a real gift and not everybody can do it, you know, when it's important. It's important to, to because when, when, when we sleep, we heal as well. Yes, exactly. Yeah. I think that is, yeah, that's most important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Humans are fascinating. That is, <laughs> that is, we heal ourselves by them, by, by ourselves. We don't need to think about it. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And be responsible. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, Eva, it's lovely. It's been lovely, lovely speaking to you and lovely seeing your work. And um, it seems to me, if I, I'm just thinking that if you feel that you might be running out of materials, that you could consider working on different scales, you know, on the smaller pieces, yeah. so that you're actually, you know, giving yeah. yourself a little bit of time, you know. But but I would say that you should be able to get supplies, you know. And, and revisit work as well, mm -hmm. you know. I'm going to order this weekend. The weekend starts tomorrow here, Friday's weekend. I, I just wanted to ask you the size of your paintings, what it is, because I want to paint big paintings, but I cannot find the right size. What are the size that you are painting? These, these big paintings behind me are about four foot by... Okay three foot so that would be about probably about 36 centimeters by well just maybe 40 centimeters by by 50 55 centimeters now some of yeah. them are like hardboard with a texture and mm -hmm. uh, and then canvases i would get stretched i would get you know but then the other little ones that you can get these would be um 30 centimeters by 30 centimeters yeah how much are these 30? They are 30 no. centimeters by 30 centimeters square. Okay. Now I couldn't I couldn't tell you the price offhand. Um, I get somebody okay. locally that um that makes the pieces for me, you know. But there's loads of suppliers, you know. Um, mm -hmm. and I think the idea of you know smaller pieces sometimes are, are nice as well. You know, I actually okay. think the smaller pieces are challenging. I forgot to mention to you, I'm doing something actually right now. I have another piece that I'm working on, but I have it. I have just started it. It's three pieces together. Let me... Like a triptych? Uh-huh. Do you see there are three pieces together? Yes. So this is what I'm doing now, actually. Good. So I, I, yeah, I was working in two of them because I couldn't get the... With that other painting with Burj Khalifa, and so I started. I decided to go for uh, something else, and this is what uh, what that is. Uh, the idea is uh, how the water moves in the in the rocks uh, around the rocks. Yes. Because yes. It, water for me is very fascinating because it is very can be very quiet, but also it is so powerful. It can, it can be very detrimental if it is going to, for example, if a dam is going to be destroyed, then it can have devastating, because it's a big power, it's a huge power. By well, it's like it emotions, it's like, it's like emotions. My first solo exhibition was called Waterways of the Mind. Yeah. And, um, and then, so water features a lot as, an, as a, a source of inspiration for me. And whether, whether the emotions, whether it's like a dam ready to burst or the pattern, as you said, about the tributaries or, you know, the estuaries or the pattern of the, the water as they make them, their way around boulders and that the boulders can be obstructions in life or actually opportunities. So there's so yeah. many things there. You know, when you talked there earlier about uh, your, you know, using your words and poetry alongside that, I mean, that's, you've got, so, I mean, the source is there. Water is a source and you've got so much between your, the elemental aspect of the, the rocks and the geology and the landscape, whether it's an aerial view from a plane, whether it's uh, organic and, and something that is created, um, you know, with looking at some of the gems that you're looking at, the microscopic work. Um, yeah. There's an artist who does some gorgeous work, um, if I can remember his name. Oh, he's a university lecturer and he, his work is um, from a, a, a microscopic slides of... Um, really? 
Amazing. If I can remember his name, I'll try and remember his name. Um, but his work is very powerful and the colors that he uses and the imagery that he finds and what he does, he looks at the images of in, in microscopic view and then he enlarges these and they're really quite special. Mm. So he works, he works mostly in digital art. Um, oh, okay. Stephen, his name is Stephen. I will, I'll find out because he, because I was just thinking there, um, Susan, when we were talking to the different artists, and there was artists that I that I know that I can see would be kind of similar in terms of maybe the source material or inspiration or indeed the mediums that they used, you know, and yeah. um, he would be a good, just, he would be a good one to connect with, uh huh. Because he works in a different media. Yeah, that is so interesting. Yes, but he uses he uses um biological and um natural forms to inspire yeah. him and they're, they're microscopic you know pieces that he has created yeah. mm -hmm. let me show other i know that you want to leave now but that is uh, have you ever heard about bioturbation about what bioturbation how do you spell that uh b i o uh -huh. Yeah. You. Yeah. You are. Uh -huh. B. A. T. I. O. N. Bioturbation. Okay. Okay. So this is uh, this is like um, my painting of bioturbation. Lovely. Yes. And this is uh, 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 this used to be worms living during all Sorry. times. Uh huh. And it is called, uh, the, the species is called Scolithos. Okay, Scolithos. Yeah, Scolithos. And uh, this, is, um, this is again from the microscope. If you look into the microscope or if you look into the core, the, 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 the rock itself, you find those kind of patterns. Now, they are not like the yes. colors, but I put colors on them. And yeah. So yeah, but I'd like to know what is the name of that artist when you... I will find out. I have a funny feeling his name is Stephen Lowry, but I will find out and I'll send it to, send it to uh, Susan. Uh -huh. That sounds good. Yeah, yeah. Well, Ava, I'm waiting to, um, when you can, you know, ship some more paintings this way. Oh. Or when you are able to come, you can bring them. I have no idea. I know. I know. It's uh, it's very hard. Mm -hmm. uh, but we can do those exhibitions online. Yes. It's a great oh, idea. Great. And if we do the exhibitions online and someone wants to purchase one of your paintings, could you ship it to them from your compound? I don't think now anything is moving up. Right. Not now, but later. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it, it is. Okay. Uh, because we have service here in CAM. We have DHL service. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Good. Good. Yeah. Well, so good to see you, Ava. Thank you for sharing. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And Thank you. Um, lovely, lovely to speak to you and lovely to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Thank you so much. Thank you. I Not took 